Thank you, Josh. Again, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chong. <laughs> so um, uh, I'm a postdoc from the Pest and Environmental Adaptation Research Group um, at the University of Melbourne. I'm going to talk about uh, the Australian aphids, diversity and the regional variation among their endocene bounds. This work is part of uh, Australian Grains Pest Innovation Program funded by GRDC. Um, everyone knows that aphids are a serious agriculture pest in Australia. Um, they damage crops not only through uh, direct feeding, but also by the transmission of plant viruses. Do you know how many aphid species have been reported in Australia? Um, following Broomley's checklist published in 2020, as well as um, two new species just um, confirmed very recently. So the total number of aphids present in Australia is 178 species. So here are the um, some most agriculturally significant um, aphid species summarized by Caesar Australia. You can find some more details by the link below. Um, so we all uh, have known that uh, the main control method for key pest aphids is through insecticide applications. So uh, we also know over-reliance on chemical control is problematic as aphid has developed resistance to insecticides with different modes of action. We are looking at ways to manipulate endocene balance in order to reduce the risk of crop damage and plant virus transmission from key aphid pests. So what is an endocene bound? Um, endocene bound are the bacteria that live within the cells of aphid in a symbiotic relationship. Almost all aphid um, require an obligate endocene bound called Bucnero that provides nutrients they cannot obtain from the plant phloem. In addition, aphids may also be infected with one or more secondary endocene bounds, which can, um, which can uh, provide a lot of benefits to aphids. Um, for example, the heat shock resistance, the parasitoid resistant, as well as the fungi resistant. So uh, in the last few decades, a, a very large number of secondary endocene bounds have been discovered in world wild population of aphids. We can see a summarized uh, summarize table here um, published by Guo um, a few years ago. Um, so a good example of the application of endocene bound for agriculture comes from plant hoppers. We can see here, so the plant hopper can transfer a virus called rice wrecked uh, stunt virus. And this of course causes a lot of damage to the rice crop. Um, so this research is done by a Chinese group. Um, Wabakia endocene bound was transferred across plant hopper species. And the plant hoppers carrying the new Wabakia strain caused less damage to the crops. It's a very good comparison. So however, the endocene bound diversity of Australian aphids is still unknown. Uh, none of the secondary endocene bound in Australian aphids has been reported, um, except for a regular infection detected in green peach aphid population collected at uh, Bex Marsh in Victoria 18 years ago by Verberger. So uh, to better understand the secondary and the symbiont diversity in Australian aphids and to identify secondary and symbionts that can be used to develop more uh, sustainable pest control strategy, 
we characterize the endocene bound diversity of a total of 30 aphid species in Australia with a particularly with a particular focus on the green peach aphid. From most of those uh, 30 aphid species, we did multiple sampling across a wide geographic range uh, and uh, a wide range of host plants as well as uh, uh, color morphs. So in total, we screened 109 aphid populations so far uh, using 16S metabar coating method. So here is a methodology flowchart of DNA metabar coating. Five individuals were put together for DNA extraction. Metabar coating targeted the 16S RNA gene and was carried out by the sequencing company, uh, Novagene. Sequence analysis was performed using a standard uh, charm to pipeline. Okay, what did we get? Um, I know a lot of information here in one slide, but I think it would be good to uh, just have an over, overall view of the endocene bound um, compositions of all 109 samples together. Look at the bars in light gray color here at the top. Um, they are all Bucnero, the primary endocene bound. Um, Bucnero was identified in all of the aphid uh, samples and was by, by far the most abundant exon we have found as we expected. Looking at the colorful bars here, they are secondary endocene bonds we have found from those aphid samples. So, so far we have found eight secondary endocene bonds um, carried by 25 aphid populations falling into 13 aphid species, which is great. So their relative abundance varied a lot uh, from 1% to uh, 55%. So here there are um, a couple of uh, surprising findings. So firstly, we find a pretty abundant regala in uh, infection in this new species uh, called Aphis lugentis. Um, it's very interesting because it is an ant attended aphid. Um, from the previous literature, um, all previous literature showed that the ant attended aphid actually is very, very less chance to carry any secondary endocene bound. But we did find a very abundant uh, regala infection here. So the other interesting things is no any secondary endocene bound was detected in uh, the key three key pest, uh, aphid pests. They are green peach aphid, oat aphid, and the Russian wheat aphid, except for the, uh, reg I mentioned before, the regular um, infection from the GPA population from Victoria. So no any other secondary endocene bound uh, were found. So good or bad. Um, the good things is all these uh, key aphid pests, they could be ideal candidates for experimental manipulation in the future. But we are still very curious about the absence of secondary endocene bonds in those key uh, aphid pests in Australia. So except for uh, the 16S metabar coding method, we also have been working on the optimization of qPCR diagnosis uh, ACEs. Um, so um, in this slide, both the table and the bar chart show the summary of the secondary endocene bonds we have found so far um, by qPCR as well as 16S barcoding. Um, based on these results, PA fate has been used as the donor for the micro injection. So we can see here, we have established a stable Rickettsiella infected oat aphid, a green peach aphid, and a Russian wheat aphid colony in our lab through micro injection. 
The sequencing, as sequencing data has confirmed that this Riccadisiella string we have found is actually Riccadisiella viridis, which can change the colors of the aphid body and can also provide the fungi uh, resistance uh, to aphids. And the other interesting things is the Riccadisiella viridis sequence variant identified in the cone aphid was identical to that observed in the PFID in our survey. We can have a look here. So they are the same, they are identical. So which means, which indicate that this Riccadisiella viridis may jump a lot between different aphid host species. Okay. As I, uh, I, as I mentioned um, before, since the beginning of this study, we have screened a total of 21 green peach aphid populations from Australia using metabarcoding um, with collections uh, spanning four states, eight host plant species and the five color morphs. However, no any secondary endosome bounds were detected in any GPA populations, um, except for the uh, study by Verberger. So um, although our survey of Australian green peach aphid population is still far from uh, exhaustive, but the lack of any observable secondary endosome bounds in most uh, samples is consistent with the international studies of uh, green peach aphid outside of China. Mm, so because uh, China is uh, another story. Um, so we have recently begun screening green peach aphid populations from China in order to provide a comparison with the Australian populations. So uh, that's what we have found so far. In agreement with the studies uh, in China, which has demonstrated a high diversity uh, of uh, secondary endosome bound in GPA, we did find, we did find uh, the Riccadisia Riquet, in one out of the six populations from China using metabarcoding method. And we detected Riccadisia again in two of uh, eight populations from China. Um, and we also uh, detected um, uh, infection of spiroplasma here in one of those eight samples uh, using qPCR uh, assay. So, uh, the GPA, um, why it is so uh, different between, uh, so different of the secondary endosome bound diversity between Australia and China, um, thinking about it a bit deeply, um, green peach aphid is probably of Asian origin, like its primary host plant peach. So uh, in Australia, it has been present for at least a century. Maybe, maybe the secondary endosome bounds were lost during the environmental adaptation after the GPA population invasion. Um, the comparison of the second, secondary endosome bounds between Australia and China would be a very good model for understanding um, interactions between secondary endosome bounds, aphid, uh, aphid uh, phenotypes, environmental stresses, and uh, aphid host plants. So we decided to do, um, to do more. The next step, um, we, we will continue characterizing the microbiomes of aphid from ongoing field collections. And we also attempt to obtain, uh, leave some, some more GPA samples uh, from the Bex marsh. Uh, and we also need to expand endosome bounds surveys of Chinese GPA populations. So what uh, can we uh, tell to farmers? Um, so 
eventually, we want to see if artificial manipulation of endocene bonds can be used to control aphids and limit their transmission of plant viruses. Um, we have screened a lot of species um, with uh, particularly on green peach aphid, and we did find a lot of interesting secondary endocene bonds. Uh, for example, by characterizing uh, Ricketsiella, we consider its potential role in BYDV virus transmission. So that's all today. Um, a huge thanks to all people involved in this study. Um, um, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Chong. Um, well, we're uh, a bit uh, out of time now, so uh, we might just leave the questions to the discussion at the end. This is a question for Chong from Isabel. Uh, I'm not sure if Chong's here. I think she's in the lab, but <laughs> maybe collectively. Oh, Chong. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll read this out to you, Chong, if you're listening. Um, Chong, did you see endosymbiont differences between Australia and China sexual and asexual populations? Okay, so that's the question for me. Any endosymbionts difference between... Um, okay, for this question, actually, I, uh, I have no idea at this stage um, because there is no literature Literatures mentioned the difference of uh, from any endocene bonds uh, in regarding to the uh, sexual and the asexual populations, but it's an interesting question. So um, if I can find some more information, I'll uh, let you know. Thanks for asking. Yeah, well, in Australia, there don't seem to be any sexual populations of green peach aphid at least that we're aware of, or if they are, it's very rare. Um. Okay, thanks, Aaron. <laughs>